So this is a not just a myth that comes from uh, it, that appears in a story or is is mentioned in passing or someone says in, in, in recanting oral history or telling oral history. We're talking about something that shapes debate and shapes Absolutely. conversation. Yes, yes. And more than what we want to admit, I believe myths shape so much of how we live our lives. Mm what we believe about ourselves, our families, our communities, our churches, our country. And it also shapes the way we find meaning in the world. And it's my theory that myths can keep us if we allow them. And if we do not recognize them for what they are, can keep us from truth. We've been talking about this ongoing response that many, uh, conservative Christian colleges have to racial justice. And what about racial justice is offensive if you acknowledge the myth mm -hmm. that we have not done things well? <laughs> the idea that America is, quote unquote, Christian nation, the idea that America has no flaw, the idea what that God has uniquely laid hands on America and yeah. covered America from sea to shining sea. Well, that myth must be protected at all costs. And if we sacrifice a few truth tellers to preserve the myth, it reminds me, and this is, you know, uh, fictional, right? But it reminds me of that moment when T'Challa confronts T'Chaka mm, in mm, Black Panther. Mm -hmm. and he's like, why didn't you bring the boy home? Like, what's going on? Why didn't you? We had to preserve we had to hold on to the lie because in, 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 from cultural reference to cultural reference, as Slim Charles would say in The Wire, if it's a lie, we stand on that lie. We fight on that lie. <laughs> and I think so many of us are preserving certain things. So what do we do when we find out something is a myth? We recognize it or maybe we've known it all along. Mm. How do we remove it My from goodness. our thinking? Because that seems to be the hardest part. I like where you went with it, with the, the 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 myth of this nation, right? Being a being a Christian nation, being on this ever ascending climb to righteousness, right? Uh, that is a big part of what is afflicting our society right now, particularly our democracy and our churches, is the attempt to preserve this myth about our institutions, about our nation, about its founding, right? And and so preliminary to your question in terms of what do we do about it is recognizing that there is a utility to these myths. They serve a function. Um, what's happening is whether we know it's a myth or not, we choose to perpetuate it because it's doing something for us or we think it's doing something for us, right? So in these these sort of nationalist myths, it's preserving a particular power structure and hierarchy. So even if it's not true, that's neither here nor there. The point is we want to keep the status quo or we want to extend our power. Or the point is I don't want people to know the truth because then this, this, and this would happen, right? So, so I think in terms of responding to myths, we've got to recognize how a myth functions in terms of what people think it's preserving or what benefit people think they're getting from it. Right. And then I don't know any other way to, to, to confront myth other than with truth. Well, and so this is where we get into the, a little bit of the complication, right? Because yes, myths persist often, as I was mentioning earlier, myths aren't necessarily all lie. They're, mm -hmm. they're, they're sometimes merely, the embellishment of truth. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, no, it, this could be true. And I think in this case, we find an example here with Malcolm and Martin because it's true. Malcolm and Martin did see things differently, mm -hmm. did have different perspectives. And so some people look at the quote and say, yeah, it's journalistic malpractice, but there's some truth in it. There's some truth in it. And so how do we dismantle the myth that contains a modicum of truth? Right, right. How do we dismantle that? And, and let me let me give an application here, because I think for some people, I know we're talking about history and the country, but some people stay in institutions, in churches, mm. because while much of what they heard and felt and saw, they found out later was myth, there was a lot of good in it, and there was some truth in it. 
And so we start to talk ourselves into a protection of, of the myth that has some truth. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Not all of it. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't all good, but it wasn't all bad. Mm. And so what do we do in these moments? And I don't think it's necessarily like some, some three-point answer. I think it's something we're constantly wrestling with, which is, okay, what do I do with my Christian education? Hmm. Like, what do I do with the fact that, yeah, they were selling some wild stuff. And it trained me to think and process and speak and live in a certain way that has helped me. And that has sharpened me. And now I'm, I'm using some of those principles now. You know, but it's in a different context. You, I think that's just a constant wrestle, which is, yeah, a lot of this was fake, but it wasn't all fake, was it? Yeah, I mean, I feel like there's there's always going to be that element because because people are trying to convey truth, and so there's always going to be an admixture in in a sense, right? If you have a body of of thought, right. So there can be individual specific facts that you can verify or not. But but the myth making comes in when you're combining lots of different points, lots of different stories, right? And so when you start to combine these things, then it does get much more complicated. You're trying to untangle the Christmas lights at this point, right? Mm. Um That's good. And I don't I just I don't know, maybe it's because as a researcher or whatever there there's there are no perfect figures there are no perfect individuals right and your ideas this is where what what i think we what we, what we need to do is cultivating an attitude and a posture of epistemic humility yeah, as they say yeah yeah right so so the, so the malpractice break that down break that down epistemic humility for yeah. those who maybe i've not heard us say that epistemology, the, the, the science of knowing, how do we know, what, do we we know, know what we know, what's yeah. true, all of those kinds of things. And humility to say we can be corrected, we can have our ideas corrected or changed, right? And, and approaching any big question or important matter with the posture of I could be wrong, there could be myths that I'm believing, I, I am open to extending or evolving in my thinking here, epistemic humility, right? And I think that's the attitude that we need to approach um, any of our stories with is that we hold them, but we hold them loosely. Yeah. They can be, they might be wrong.